I want to know down in the comments, what kind of iPhone do you have? You're rocking with the Android Type A or an iPhone Type I. In fact, I might have to give you a shout out on the show. You say you have an iPhone mini. I get, I get a hard time in the office about this. iPhone mini, very small. I enjoy it. Let me know down in the comments, A or I. Welcome into Saints Now. I am Will Scott, and on today's show, we're going to be breaking down some Saints rumors, some guys that they might look to trade for because they need a running back. They might look to trade for a running back. One of those guys that might be available is Kenyon Drake. So Bleacher Report put out an article saying that, you know, basically this article is about one trade that each NFL team should make before training camp starts. Drake was linked to the Saints in this article, and it's interesting because Las Vegas has already restructured his contract. So with the potential with the potential of an Alvin Kamara suspension coming, it might make sense for the Saints to go out and trade for a pretty high quality running back. Drake, I would be very interested in if I was Mickey Loomis and New Orleans. Here's what Bleach Report said in this article. The Raiders' Mike Mayock, John Gruden era featured numerous poor investments and personnel decisions, but the Kenyon Drake signing was an especially dumbfounding move. Just two years after drafting Josh Jacobs in the first round, the Raiders signed Drake to a two-year $11 million deal ahead of the 2021 season. The signing fell flat, and he produced just 93 touches for 545 total yards and three touchdowns. The Raiders have the offensive line for Drake to be an effective runner from the start. New general manager Dave Ziegler could have been comfortable with the Jacobs-Drake duo, but he doubled down with the acquisitions of Brandon Bolden, Amir White, and Britton Brown. Ziegler already restructured Drake's contract to make 2023 a void year, so the full value of the deal won't be realized. Trading Drake would save $2.75 million against a $1.1 million dead cap hit, which is a much better option than cutting the veteran. New Orleans stands out as an excellent landing spot. With Alvin Kamara's future uncertain after he was arrested and charged with battery resulting in substantial bodily harm in February, that was in Las Vegas, the Saints could use a versatile pass-catching back with explosiveness. They've worked out David Johnson recently, but Drake is a much better option in comparison. And I absolutely agree. In fact, when the Saints worked out David Johnson, I'm like, eh, I would rather trade for running back, and Drake is up there toward the top of my list. So here was their idea. The Saints would be giving up a fifth-round pick next year. They would be getting Kenyon Drake, who could very well be the RB1 the first couple weeks of the season. I would 100% do this trade. Would you do this trade? And who wins this trade? Would it be Las Vegas winning the trade? Type LVR down in the comments. Or is it New Orleans? Type NOS. Let me know who would win this trade. I'm typing Saints down in the chat. I think there's, there's no question that this is a pretty good deal for New Orleans. But is he worth a trade? He broke his ankle on December 5th against Washington. He really hasn't been the player that the Raiders were hoping they were getting on that two-year deal, which is one of the reasons they restructured his contract. So now it has all these void years on his contract. So even if they move him, they would still owe him this much over time all the way up until 2026. So you have all these different void years. Now, trading him now would save the Raiders $2.75 million in 2022, a better option uh, than cutting him. Excuse me, if they cut him, they would save that much. If they trade him, the Saints would be responsible for $2.75 million. I, I don't mind that. I really don't. The Saints need a running back. Drake is solid. Yeah, he's not Alvin Kamara, but he's uh, probably a better starting option than Mark Ingram, in my opinion. Here is what he did last year with the Raiders. 63 carries, 254 yards, two touchdowns. He averaged four yards per carry. Now, the question that I'm going to ask you, should the Saints trade for Kenyon Drake? Type T for trade or type P for pass down in the comments section. Should the Saints make a deal with Las Vegas to get a new running back? 
talking about another trade that could go down. That is the possibility of trading defensive back Bradley Roby. In that same article, Bleacher Report mentioned that maybe the Saints should trade Roby and that the Steelers should pursue a trade for the defensive back. Pittsburgh showed interest in Roby back in 2019 when he was a free agent. The Saints have so much depth at corner. I mean, I wouldn't mind this at all, trading uh, away Bradley Roby, especially with Alante Taylor looking really good in the Saints offseason programs. In fact, he was one of our winners from minicamp. He has looked absolutely fantastic throughout all of the OTAs and rookie minicamp and minicamp uh, activities that the Saints have done. So I think with that being said, it makes some sense to trade Roby because he's not as valuable. So here is the trade that Bleacher Report put together. The Steelers would be getting Bradley Roby. The Saints would be getting a 2023 sixth round pick. I say do it. Honestly, I mean, depth is important, sure, but Roby right now behind Delonte Taylor on this depth chart might make some sense to move him, and it might make some sense for Pittsburgh as well because this is what Bleacher Report said. The Pittsburgh Steelers rarely have a significant amount of cap room to use, but it won't do them much good at this point of the offseason. There's a league-wide shortage on potentially available quality veteran cornerbacks, but the Steelers' current projected starters are the weakest in the NFL. The Saints have a cornerback to spare in Bradley Roby. The 30-year-old veteran was traded to New Orleans last year and reworked his contract this offseason to stay with the Saints. His cap hit in 2022 is just $1.765 million. Roby is sticky in man coverage and can play outside or in the slot. Current Steelers cornerbacks Levi Wallace and Akilo Witherspoon are more suited for heavy zone play calls, whereas Roby would give defensive coordinator Terrell Austin more flexibility in case the zone isn't working. He'd at least be a rotational starter for Pittsburgh compared to a fifth or sixth on a loaded Saints depth chart. Here is what Roby did last season. So just 23 tackles, did have an interception, but I think Bleach Report made a very good point there. I mean, he's like the fifth or sixth corner right now on the Saints team. Yeah, he's going to make the team probably, but I, I think it makes some sense to trade him. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to get a little bit more than a six-round pick, but because of his value, I don't really think that's going to happen. But, hey, you're getting a, you're getting at least something for him, a guy that you really don't need, especially after the draft with the Saints did taking a latte Taylor. Should the Saints trade away Bradley Roby? Type Y for yes or type N for no down in the comment section. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So an ad break comes, go down, let me know what you think, should the Saints trade away Roby. I know a lot of you guys are Pelicans fans, and the NBA draft is on Thursday night. Pels have the eighth overall selection. Let me tell you, the best place to watch it is right here on Chat Sports. That's the sublink right there to our main channel, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Is it going to be A.J. Griffin? Is it going to be Benedict? Benedict Matherin, a lot of interesting names that should be on the board when the Pels pick at 8. So you're going to want to watch that on Thursday night. Mark your calendar. Again, that's the sublink. Go subscribe to our main Chat Sports channel so you can watch the draft. Talking about can't guard Mike, Michael Thomas. Now, Bleach Report also put out this other article that was separate from the one we previously talked about is players that could disappoint in 2022. And they named one player from each team. MT was the player on the Saints that they said could be in for a disappointing season. He's had multiple anchors, ankle surgeries, hasn't played in a full season since 2019 when he was the offensive player of the year in this league. The Saints have a very strong wide receiver room. Here is what Nick Underhill, Saints reporter, said about Michael Thomas. It's a process that needs to play out. I think it is heading in the right direction. Him being in the building is what matters right now. Last year at this point, he was away from the team. He wasn't there training. And then he came in for minicamp, and they found out about the ankle. This year, he's in, he's around, he's bought in. He met with Dennis Allen in California. Cody Burns flew out there to meet with him. I think things are headed in the right direction, and that's the thing to look at right now. That is great to hear, the fact that Michael Thomas is bought in. 
And during the injury during the injury stuff last year, you know, we were wondering like what's going on. We just kind of felt out of the loop. I think some of the coaches and the the front office felt out of the loop too. Now we know what is going on. Michael Thomas is bought in. He's there, and I think he's going to have a big year. And he's going to be one of the many, many really good Saints wide receivers. Look at what they've done this offseason. You sign Jarvis Landry. You draft Chris Olave. This receiver room vastly improved. And you bring Michael Thomas back fully healthy. Traquan Smith still in this team. Callaway. I mean, you have some uh, strong rookie UDFAs too, like Dixon, that might make an impact. The question for MT this year is, is he still can't guard Mike? Look at 2019, one of the best seasons we've ever seen from a receiver in this league. But in 2020, just seven games played, no touchdowns. 2021, he didn't even play at all. So is he that same player that we saw in 2019? We're going to find that out pretty early. Uh, I don't think he's going to put up those numbers again in his career, but he's still Michael freaking Thomas, and he's going to be a top five receiver in the NFL. Now send MT some good vibes by hitting that thumbs icon, dropping a like on this video. Right now we're trailing our Atlanta Falcons channel. It's unacceptable in our likes contest here at Chad Sports. Hit that thumbs up icon, show uh, show some uh, love to MT. Appreciate you all watching. Appreciate you subscribing to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, go down. We're the number one YouTube channel for all Saints news and rumors.